Dear viewers, this is our weekly Expert Speaks program. This week, I have brought some good news for you. We are discussing the possibility of how NRIs can reduce their capital gains tax in India. This is NRI Money Clinic for you, and I am Dr. Chandra Kanbat, your financial guide for a happy living. NRI Money Clinic, no hype, just the right advice. Dear viewers, to get the idea of how you can get relief from the capital gains taxes that you have to pay in India, you have to watch this program till the end. There are a lot of finer points that we are going to discuss with the faculty of the day. Dear viewers, to help you with your taxation matter, I have brought to the studios my eminent faculty, Chartered Accountant, Mr. Sri Ram Rao. Mr. Sri Ram Rao is a very popular faculty on this channel. He has appeared on several subjects. He has simplified a lot of tax codes for the benefit of NRIs. Mr. Sri Ram Rao is a practicing Chartered Accountant, a partner at Nitin J. Shetty & Co., a man who specializes in direct tax and the international taxation. He has helped a lot of NRIs in solving their taxation-related issues. Welcome to the show, Mr. Sri Ram Rao. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Sri Ram, I have chosen the topic, how can NRIs reduce their tax burden with respect to capital gains tax? Before we start, can I ask you a few of the basic questions so that the audience can understand yeah. what capital gains is, how it gets computed or which can be categorized as capital gains. Yeah. Let's spend some time on that. Yeah. Then we'll move to the main topic of the day, how NRIs can reduce their tax burden with respect to the capital gains. Definitely. My first question to you is, how the capital gains will be taxed in India for non-resident Indians? Okay. Now, when somebody says capital gains taxation, it is part of income tax only. So, now this capital gains is taxed at specific rates, etc. as per Indian tax law and as per the Indian tax laws, on transfer of any capital asset, the income earned therefrom will be tax liable for capital gain taxes. Hmm. Herein, if one need to check what is transfer, it is like if you sell if you redeem, if you relinquish any rights or if you extinguish any rights in any or say if there is a compulsory acquisition, etc. So, all these are considered as transfer. Further, if one need to check what is the definition of capital asset, it will be including all kinds of property, especially the properties which are like immovable properties. And in respect of movable properties, any property which is not a stock in trade and a personal effect, but it will always include certain properties such as shares and uh, securities, mutual fund units, unit linked in insurance policies which has been recently added therein. ULIPS. ULIPS. Of course, there are certain conditions. Yeah. Apart from that, uh, jewelries, drawings, paintings, work of art, archaeological collections, sculptures, all these are considered as capital asset. So, okay. on transfer of any of this, if there is a sale, etc., or even exchange of that will uh, trigger capital gain taxes. Okay. Mr. Shira, NRIs use their NRE accounts and NRO accounts to invest in India. Correct. There is a general feeling in the minds of NRIs that they invest any money from NRE account mm -hmm. and whether it's an income or a capital gains, both are tax free. Mm -hmm. How true is this assumption? And can they rely on paying only from NRE to get that tax relief? No, the assumption is totally not true at all. So, any funds which are infused directly from outside of India or which are directly, you know, invested from their NRE accounts or NRO accounts, whatever it may be, if it is invested in an asset or in a property, and on sale of that particular property, definitely the capital gains will be taxable in India. The concept is simple. Maybe funds have been infused from outside of India, but the income is generated out of that particular investment mm. is in India. Okay. So, definitely 
the capital gains will always be taxable in India as per uh, Indian domestic tax law. So whether they invest from an NRO account or a resident uh, uh, Indian invest from his resident account hmm. or NRA account, if it is a capital gains, it is liable to be paid tax yes. as per the whatever the tax yes. codes that yes. are applicable there. Yes, the rules are one and the same. Right. What is the status with respect to people making profits using the future and options, trading, uh, whether that's also a capital gains? No. Future and options will never be a capital gain. Future and options, if it is dealt in a recognized stock exchange, it will be considered as a normal business income. If it is dealt in a, other than any recognized stock exchange, uh, other stock exchange, that will be considered as a speculative income. So, intradays will always be spe speculative income as per uh, tax law. So, it will never be a capital gain. Okay. These days, uh, everybody is talking about cryptos. It is the fashion of the day. Correct. Recently, government has put a draconian taxation clause on that. Let's not get into the debate of yes. whether that's too much, too less. Correct. My first question is, if somebody makes some profits out of the cryptos, is it a capital gains? No, it will not be considered as a capital gain because it is separately brought into law or statute, what we can say is as a virtual digital asset. And it is out of the competition mechanism of capital gains. It is separately, a uh, separate section is there wherein a specific rate of tax is given. Mm. So, there is no linkage of this particular definition of virtual digital asset, crypto or NFTs, etc. with the capital gains. So, in my view, it will never be a capital gains. It is taxes, other income. Other income. Yes. Okay. Uh, Mr. Sriram, you just now said that any investment which comes from NRE account, if it is a capital gains, so there is no relief. It is not an income. It's not an NRE FD interest, which has been given an exemption, right? Correct. Any taxpayer will look forward to ways and means, how he can minimize his taxation, how he can bypass the taxation in a legally correct way. Correct. Is there any provisions in the law books or the tax codes, which gives any chance for the NRIs to reduce their uh, tax burden with respect to capital gains. Uh, what does your practice say? What does your research is saying in this? As per Indian domestic laws, I have explained already, any asset, whether it's held by a resident, a non-resident, PIO, OCI, foreign national, whoever it may be, if it is appreciating in its value and you are transferring it, of course, the capital gains will be always taxable in India. And uh, invariably, for a non-resident or a PIO or a OCI or a foreign national who are non-resident in India, there is a benefit what they can claim out of double taxation avoidance agreement. The double taxation avoidance agreement normally it will uh, for the purpose of capital gains it provides uh, provisions under Article 13 or Article 14 sometimes. Hmm. So invariably in those also it says that. Wherever the capital gains are sourced, the tax has to be paid in that country. Mm. And of course, the resident country will also want its share of uh, taxes. So, in resident country also, you have to pay a tax. And whatever taxes you paid, you can claim as foreign tax credit. So, in the country of residence. Mm. However, if you go into certain DTAs in particular, the Article 13 of it, for some of the assets, it gives certain benefits. Mm. Okay, so let us try and get into the deeper and finer points of uh, this uh, double taxation awareness agreement, especially with uh, countries with which India has double taxation awareness agreement, and normally India has, I mean, Indian expats relate there, so normally or live there. So only those countries I will concentrate upon. Okay. And I will explain the provisions. If you consider the Middle East and yes. the US, I think uh, two-third of the NRI population gets covered, I think, looks like. Probably. I will I will try to, you know, yeah. uh, I will definitely I will include Middle East, US, etc. But, of course. But here the final point is, if you are a non-resident in India, you must be a resident in some other country. Hmm. So, thereby, you are not a stateless person for tax purposes for that particular year. That's right. it. So, you should be a tax resident in one or the other country. One or the other country. So, if that is there, if you are a resident of say UAE and you are a non-resident in India, you are earning capital gains in India, 
then there is a double taxation avoidance between India and UAE which can come into picture. Right. You can avail the provisions. Right. So how to avail? I will just explain uh, one by one. So if one goes through certain provisions of uh, double taxation avoidance between India and countries like UAE, Qatar, Kuwait, Oman and Saudi Arabia which are Gulf countries and uh, France, Germany, Netherlands, Austria, Italy, Hungary, Sweden, Switzerland. These mm. are European countries. South Africa and uh, Sri Lanka, Japan, Mauritius, Malaysia and Singapore. Mm. Like African and uh, Asian countries. So, all these uh, double taxation avoidance agreement and there might be many more. I have included only few. So, all these double taxation avoidance agreement invariably has the following provisions. Hmm. The following provisions I will explain properly. Okay. Please understand because it is very important otherwise one will miss out. All these uh, countries where in double taxation avoidance agreement I have explained, they say that the immovable properties or any movable properties held in a business in India hmm. or any shares held in an Indian company or shares held in a company outside of India, shares held in a company outside of India, but that company which is outside of India having many immovable properties in India hmm. and it derives its value, uh, company share value is derived from this immovable properties which is situated in India. So, in all these circumstances, the income of capital gains will be taxable in the country of source. Which is India. Which is India. Right. So, so it will get taxed in yes, India. Yes, invariably right. it will get taxed in India. Right. Any asset other than these four, what I have already mentioned, if it is held in India, say for example, it can be mutual fund units or jewelry, archaeological collections or drawings, paintings, sculptures, so Anything. on and so forth, which I have already explained. So, unless they are categorized in the first four, yes, what is Yes, unless said? they are categorized in first four. Right. Any other assets held by you hmm. in India hmm. and if you earn capital gains therefrom, hmm. that will not be taxable in India. It will be taxable only in the country where you are a resident for that particular year. Hmm. Okay. okay. So, I will explain once again. The four assets which I have told, immovable properties, movable properties held in a business or a Indian company shares held or a share of a company which is held outside of India which is having its value of shares substantially from an immovable property held in India. Apart from these four assets, any asset which is held in India which, uh, which has earned you capital gains during that period, mm. that will be exempt from taxation in India. Mm. Because the double tax agreement provides that these incomes of capital gains will be taxable only in the country where you are a resident. Right, right. So, you must be a resident in some other country. Okay. Uh, dear viewers, let's look at like this now. If you have a capital gains, then you have to first look at where the capital gains has come from. Correct. If it is the four heads of accounts which Mr. Sriram referred, if the capital gains has come from that, then it becomes taxable in India as per the DTAA provision. Yes. If the capital gains is coming from any other heading other than these four, then for the specified countries what he mentioned, most of the countries in Middle East and the list of countries which he spoke just now, then the capital gains cannot be paid in India or it is exempted to be, cannot be charged in India. Yes. Rather, it has to be charged in the country where you live as per the tax code of that particular country. Correct. Of course. Right? Yes. That's what my understanding is correct. Absolutely correct. Now, here there are certain final points which I have to explain. Okay. Now, out of uh, Gulf countries name which I have taken, I think Bahrain is the country which I have left out. But unfortunately, India doesn't have a comprehensive uh, double taxation avoidance agreement with the Bahrain. Oh, interesting. Yes, that is why you will not get this exemption if you are a resident of Bahrain. Okay. Okay. And uh, apart from this, the uh, India has got a double taxation avoidance agreement with USA, Canada, UK, Australia, China, Hong Kong, 
So, it has with most of the countries yes, across yes. the world. It, it is, is, it is it, having. It's but really strange that Bahrain doesn't have a comprehensive DTA. Can't. I mean, uh, it's a government policy. They have to right. come together and. But uh, yeah, now what I mentioned is these countries like USA, Canada, China, Hong Kong, and UK and uh, Australia. So with those countries, even though India has double taxation governance agreement. the taxation of capital gain provisions that article 13 or 14 what i have mentioned they doesn't have this exemption provision mm. what it says is either all the assets will be taxable as per the domestic law mm. so if that is the case then automatically it will be taxed in india mm. or they will say that it may be taxable in the contracting state where the asset is situated mm. so at that time also it will be taxable in india so if you are a resident of us canada and uk australia hong kong china etc hmm. you may you will not be eligible for this exemption okay so the best way for the viewers to look at is talk to your chartered accountant or hmm. check through the dta agreement between india and the country where you live correct go to section 13 14 of the yes. particular clause correct try to understand yourself what it has been mentioned if correct. you cannot understand take the help of the chartered accountant correct of course but Nevertheless, a lot of NRIs live in the countries which uh, Mr. Sri Ram has mentioned. That means this benefit will not go only for few. There's a large chunk of NRIs who can derive benefit uh, from these tax treaties. Yes, I mean I mentioned only few countries. Right now, there are so many countries also. Yeah, India has a yes. DTA agreement with more than 150 countries, if I am not wrong, or maybe could yeah. be a few uh, dense countries. About hundred. Side, yes, about hundred actually, but. Yes, most of the countries it covers. Right, right, right. Okay, uh, Mr. Sri Ram, you gave the good news that a lot of NRIs can get benefited and the tax savings can be substantial, quite Correct. huge. Okay, everyone should uh, see this uh, possibility for themselves. Uh, one of the things that comes to my mind is yes, you said that they can get this benefit. Nothing comes to you without the documentary evidence. Correct. Right. So, if you have to claim something, you have to have a documentary evidence. Correct. If an NRI has got such capital gains and the DTA provides them that there it need not be taxed in India, what is the documentary evidence or the preconditions that they have to satisfy the assessing officer at the time of filing tax returns or other assessment of the case? Correct. Now, here in a um, couple of con- conditions, I have already explained. You must be a non-resident in India. Mm. so that is the first condition at the same time for the same period you must be a resident in some other country mm. and with that country india should must have a double taxation avoidance agreement and in that double taxation avoidance agreement this condition should be there four conditions so you are a non resident you should be a non resident you should be a resident in another country that country should have a dta agreement in india and that dta agreement should highlight this particular clause yes. where such assets should be exempted from taxation in india correct right. so these are the basic principle so in order to get or avail the benefit of double taxation avoidance agreement in india section 90 subsection 4 which says that there must be a trc that is tax residency certificate obtained by that non resident from the country of his residence it is very explicitly telling that you must have a TRC certificate TRC, tax residency certificate okay so tax residency certificate is a must so this is the major precondition to avail the entire benefit of double tax system avoidance agreement okay so in the absence of TRC in a normal course of time it is not possible for you to make a claim is that yes. a fair statement yes it is a fair statement okay one follow up question for you there can be instances where a uh, person because this involves two countries and it involves movement of persons if there were to be a condition where in which a person is not able to obtain a trc hmm. uh, for genuine reasons hmm. like uh, that particular state does not have a system or this person got stuck somewhere else because of which he is not able to go there is there any relaxation in the law or are there any uh, the prior examples of the exemptions have been given in a without a trc yes um it's a it should be like something like a condition of impossibility of performance from the either from the point of view of that particular individual hmm. or say as you explained from the point of view of that particular government which doesn't have the system of providing trc 
Hmm. But that has to be substantiated with the documentary evidence before the appellate authorities or the assessing authorities. Hmm. They, if they are satisfied, they will provide the relaxation of not obtaining a TRC hmm. and uh, then availing the DTA provisions. Hmm. So, there are a couple of in instances where the tribunals in India have provided this leeway from for that particular individual or a particular SSE for not obtaining a TRC, still they allowed them, him to avail the benefit of double taxation avoidance agreement. But these are mostly exceptions. Yes, and it is litigious. Litigious means it is prone to litigation. You have to face the authorities, you have to fight with them, uh, say you have to file an appeal, etc. And then might be uh, you might get the benefit. So, it is a chance and depends on your uh, convincing the authorities. Correct. The easier way is follow the law, yes. get the TRC, put those papers in front of the assessing officer yes. and get the exemptions. Correct. Right? Correct. Okay. One thing which comes to my mind. You spoke about this exemption being made available to countries in the Middle East. Correct. Right? Uh, will those countries issue TRC? I will tell you why I am asking this question. They do not have an income tax over there. Right? So, you go to Eurozone, USA, Canada, it is soaked in income tax. Yes. Whereas, you come to Middle East, it is tax heavens. Correct. So, when they don't have an income tax uh, regime over there, mm. will they issue TRC or the rules is same for them? Are there any exemptions for this? There is no exemption for these rules. The rules is same. And in my clientele, many of residents of uh, UAE and the residents of Oman have obtained TRC hmm. from uh, federal tax authorities. Of course, in UAE, if I am not wrong, it is an online process entirely. Hmm. So, you will have to, of course, you have to upload certain documents, etc., which is your own documents. And if the authorities are uh, satisfied, then the federal tax authorities, they will issue a TRC. Of course, there will be certain fee for hmm. this obtaining a TRC. Same way in Oman also, the TRC can be obtained. My clientele have obtained. So, it is not correct to say that in Middle East, because they don't have a tax law, it is not possible to obtain a TRC. It okay. is possible to obtain a TRC from Middle East countries also. So, as long as those countries have the practice of issuing a TRC, yes. the assessee has to obtain it. Yes. Right? Of course. Yes. But if some country you feel is not giving TRC and yes. if you are able to prove yes. that the country where I live does not have this particular system, system. nobody has given till now Correct. and if you are able to convince the authorities probably it can pass without a… Yes, uh, the you might have to make an effort. Say for example, right. uh, say in Kuwait, you just go and approach the authorities, tax authority or the Ministry of Finance and apply to them. They acknowledge your accept, uh, acceptance and then say that, you know, we don't have that system of providing TRC. If they write it and give it to you, that itself is a proof for you. Right. Impossibility of performance. Right, right. Uh, you told about this. Uh, one question that could be there in the mind of uh, viewers is, I will get a TRC this year and file my tax return, I will get an exemption. Correct. This TRC affair, is it a one-time affair? Is it uh, that you have to get it every year? How does the uh, the practice works in this case? Yeah, TRC means a tax residency certificate. I have already explained. It means state. It says that you are a tax resident of that particular country, and for that particular period, so you have to apply to the authorities for which period you want your TRC. So, for that period, they will look into your records and uh, they will satisfy themselves whether you are a tax resident of this of that particular country, if you are tax resident, then they will issue TRC. And okay. it is valid only for that particular period. Every year, you might have to reapply and obtain, if you have to obtain that TRC. So, it is just like it's a, it has a validity period. Yes. So, you have lived in this particular country from such and such a Correct. period or the financial year, what it uh, represents in huh. that particular country, it is valid only for that. Only for that. So, every new year, Hmm. Where you have to apply, you have to apply freshly and get it, collect it and keep it. Yes. Probably if you don't have any capital gains uh, exemption to be claimed in that particular year, uh, you need not apply for a TRC and keep yes. it in your uh, uh, files. Yes. But if there is a capital gains tax and you have to claim an exemption at that point of time, you have to obtain TRC for that particular year. I, I hope that suffice to say that. Um, add on to it, I can I can say that, you know, to claim the entire benefit of DTA, 
So it may not be capital gains also. If it might be some interest income, dividend income, which I've already explained in one of the videos earlier. Right. To claim reduced rate of taxes as per double tax and overness agreement. It is a must for you to obtain a TRC. Okay. So you obtain one TRC, it can be applied to all. If you have all these incomes. Right. So like that. Right. Mr. Sriram, I will put across one situation that could be there. See, for example, I'll tell you some NRA lives in uh, UAE. Okay. Okay. He has a capital gains tax. Okay. Incidence in India. Mm-hmm. Let's t- let's take the case of mutual fund. Okay. And the capital gains tax is ten thousand rupees. Okay. Right. To claim an exemption, he has to get a TRC. Correct. And to claiming the TRC, let's assume the cost is more than ten thousand. Let's say it is twenty five thousand, yeah. fifty thousand, whatever it is. I understand. Now, is it mandatory for that investor? to claim an exemption because it is mentioned in DTAA or he can just think okay I'll pay 10,000 tax here to get a refund of that I have to spend much bigger amount there correct I just don't care I'll better pay taxes in India and he can just sit there yes. or he's obliged to take a TRC availing the benefit of double taxation and avoidance agreement is an option option it is section 90 subsection 2 is clear right if it is beneficial you uh, obtain that Right. Otherwise, if the domestic law is beneficial, that you obtain. Right. Whichever is beneficial to your fact and circumstances, you obtain. Right. So, uh, if your uh, cost of uh, getting a TRC is more than uh, the benefit what you are going to gain, then uh, no point in… Just doesn't make sense. Yes. Uh, whereas, it might be a case of other uh, way around. Say, you, you have two different type of uh, streams of income, where uh, one is a loss. Say, for example, capital gain is a loss. Okay, you don't want to apply the uh, uh, double taxation avoidance agreement provisions because this loss is there, but another income is there, you want to offset it. Hmm. So, hmm. if you apply the double taxation avoidance agreement, since the income is not taxable, loss also cannot be offset. Right, right. So, if you don't apply, this loss can be offset. So, at the same time, same year, for some other income, you may apply TRC. Right. And uh, double taxation avoidance agreement provisions. Right. It is totally optional, it is coin income. The decision to apply exa relief under DTA or yes. not is purely at the discretion of SSC. The, uh, the SSC. Of course, they have to uh, some due diligence is there. Uh, they have, might have to take some uh, professional help. But uh, yes, it is optional. Right. Uh, Mr. Sriram, thank you very much for this awesome piece of research, which will probably give relief to so many NRIs living in these particular countries. A uh, big thank you from the bottom of my heart on behalf of my viewers and be- on behalf of my channel. Uh, we remain in gratitude to you for your time, research and help that you are extending to the NRA community. Thank you very much for your time and uh, research. Thank you. Thank you. Dear viewers, hope the video that we have done today helped you to understand how you can save taxes using the double taxation avoidance agreements between different countries. Please like this video. If you are a person who is watching my channel for the first time, or if you are yet to subscribe for the channel, please hit the subscribe button and press the bell icon. Don't forget to share these videos with your near and dear ones. Thank you very much for watching this episode on NRA Money Clinic. I shall be back with you with yet another topic, with yet another expert very, very soon. Press the bell icon for more details and subscribe our channel.